Good morning, church. Wherever you are joining us this morning, we welcome you to this service of worship at Oakland United Methodist Church in Oakland, Iowa. I'm Pastor Carolyn. There are no announcements this morning, but please continue to check our Facebook page for upcoming events and posts. As we begin our worship, let's take time to center ourselves. Set aside any distractions so that you can be fully present to God. Whatever worries, fears, or burdens you might be carrying, I invite you to set them down, at least for this moment, so that you, could, so that you can truly focus on connecting with God. If at the end of this service of worship you want to pick those things up again, you certainly can, but please know that if you are willing to let them go, God is willing to carry them for you or help you to carry them. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose compassion embraces everyone, gather the outcast and the lost, heal the wounds of fear and distrust that divide us, and make us people of reconciliation, that we may embody your merciful love and rejoice in your astounding grace. By the power of your spirit, give us your words of life, that our faith may increase and our hearts be made whole. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Romans 11, verses 1 through 2 and 29 through 32. Israel's rejection is not final. The apostle Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew, for the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. And our hymn is number 57 in the United Methodist hymnal, O for a thousand tongues to sing. We'll be doing verses one through four. gospel reading this morning is from Matthew 15 verses 21 through 28 a Canaanite woman's faith Jesus left that place and went to the district of Tyre and Sidon just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting have mercy on me Lord son of David my daughter is tormented by a demon but Jesus did not answer her at all and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. 
And he answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to worship this morning, to hear your words spoken and proclaimed, to sing with joy. We pray this morning that the seeds of the teaching that we hear this morning will take root in our hearts and that your spirit will cause them to grow into hope and peace and joy that will overflow in our words and actions. Amen. We live in a very divided society. We're divided by income, race, politics, gender, education, sexual orientation, and a whole host of other things. And social media reinforces these divisions. We friend some people and not others. We follow people and groups online that reinforce our viewpoints. We select which commentators, news programs, and media organizations we follow based on whether or not we agree with their opinions and news coverage. All of which allows us to stay within a group of people to, with whom we feel the most comfortable and unfortunately, too often to dismiss, discount, or demonize those with whom we differ or disagree. An old Irish saying points to this all too human tendency to draw lines of exclusion. May the Lord bless them that loves us, and for them that don't love us, may he turn their hearts. And if he can't turn their hearts, may he turn their ankles, so we'll know them by their limping. We see this same human tendency to draw lines in our gospel reading this morning. As today's pa gospel passage begins, Jesus leaves the shores of the Sea of Galilee and travels into the non-Jewish territory of Tyre and Sidon, or Phoenicia, where to what today is part of Lebanon. This is not exactly his old stomping grounds. In fact, Tyre and Sidon were considered the most diabolically wicked of all non-Jewish cities and were the perpetual target of Israel's prophets. It was a country filled with pagans and other suspect characters, people that devout Jews of that time excluded from the circle of God's love as they saw it. And yet Jesus walks boldly into this territory, which should say something, and it doesn't take long for one of the locals to discover his presence and start making a scene. The gospel accounts contain no evidence of Jesus doing any miracles or healing in the region before this encounter, but right away he's approached by a woman who somehow knows who he is and comes to him with a desperate request. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Now her first address to Jesus is Lord, the title given, to, given Jesus by all true believers in Matthew's gospel. It is also important to note that this is a Canaanite woman who calls Jesus by his messianic name, Son of David, a term used in Matthew's gospel by the riffraff, the no accounts, who nonetheless are able to see in Jesus Israel's Messiah, when even proper religious folks like the Pharisees and even Jesus' own disciples can't or don't see this. The woman clearly states her problem, but doesn't directly request healing for her daughter. Instead, she asks for mercy, which she apparently believes will come in the form of her daughter's exorcism. But her request is met with silence. 
The woman is not dismissed. She's simply ignored. Certainly not the behavior we have come to expect from Jesus. The disciples speak not to her, but to Jesus, asking him to send this noisy, annoying woman away. Jesus' response seems abrupt and in line with the disciples' desire to get rid of her. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But undeterred, the woman forces her way into Jesus and kneels at, the, and kneels at his feet, saying, Lord, help me. Now, it's unclear whether Matthew has Jesus' reply addressed to the disciples or whether it's intended for the woman. It's not right to take the children's food and feed it to the dogs. But the woman takes his remark as if he were speaking to her. Well, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And finally, for her persistence, the woman gets the healing she desires for her daughter. Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. Now, this encounter between Jesus and this persistent woman is troubling. Why did Jesus ignore the woman at first? Why did he seem to exclude her? Did he really mean to call her a dog? This is really one of those times when I wish I could have heard the tone of Jesus' voice when he spoke. Did he sound dismissive, angry, annoyed? Was he tired, impatient, frustrated by the woman's refusal to go away? Was there a joking tone in his voice? We simply don't know. But it's possible Jesus' words were not aimed at belittling the woman, but rather intended as a message for his disciples. As though he were saying, some would say that my ministry is limited to the Jews, but you and I know better. Jesus appears to be creating a barrier, but only to call attention to the barrier that his disciples have erected and want him to defend. By appearing to defend the barrier his society has created between himself and this non-Jewish Canaanite woman, he reveals them to everyone. And then he tears that barrier down by showing mercy to the woman, healing her daughter, and commending the woman's faith, thereby reinforcing that there are no barriers to God's mercy, which includes everyone. The disciples saw the woman as an embarrassing nuisance, not as someone worthy of God's love or mercy. One of the surest signs that we have not understood nor embraced the love of God is an inability to see others as worthy objects of God's love. And one of the surest signs that we have understood and embraced the love of God is an ability to see others with the eyes of Christ and a waning of prejudice, bigotry, and intolerance in our spirits. The core of divine love is an active passion to draw every person into a life-giving relationship with God. The heart of this relationship is loving and obeying God and allowing the character of God to transform our own character so that over time we become the loving people God created us to be and we begin to see everyone through Christ-colored glasses. God wants to include everybody and I'm glad everybody is included because that means I'm included too. However, when I look at my own prejudices, and consider the people with whom I am not so comfortable or tolerant, God's desire to include all persons begins to nudge me where I would rather not be nudged. And I discover that this is a place where I am most challenged to grow and change. Because I cannot ignore or exclude from my love or care anyone that God's love includes. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, was the cry of this pagan woman whose prayer was heard and whose faith was rewarded. We echo her prayer today. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of David, Son of the living God, have mercy on us too and help us to see others as you see them. Amen. Our next song is Freely, Freely, number 389.
Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks that we can come before you this morning, lifting up those concerns and joys which are on our hearts and which we name silently now before you. We give you thanks that we know that you hear our prayers. And we pray, especially this morning, for those who are sick and those who have lost loved ones, that they might feel your healing presence and comfort. We pray for all of those who are in nursing homes and assisted living, and most especially those right now who are in Oakland Manor, for the staff and the, the families of the residents and staff as they continue to battle COVID-19. We pray that they will find healing and comfort and that the staff might find the strength that they need as they do this difficult work. We pray for those who are serving in the military and most especially for those who are serving in places of danger and conflict. We pray for their safety and we pray for your continued watch over them and for their families, that they might also find strength as they await the safe return of their loved ones. We pray for Jean Blackburn as she continues her transition to her new living situation. And we pray that you will make that a smooth transition and that as best as she can in this difficult time, she will be able to fit in and to make friends and feel comfortable. We pray for Marvin's family, that they might find strength and comfort this week and in the days and weeks to come. We pray also, Lord, as school begins, that you would be with all of the staff and teachers of the school district, that you would be with the administrators, that you would be in the midst of the students and with the parents, that you would bring safety and protection for all of those involved in the school. We pray, Lord, also for ourselves, that when we are tempted to judge or dismiss or deny the humanity of someone simply because of their race, simply because of their language or their religion or in any way that they differ from us, we pray that you will open our eyes you pray, we pray that you will soften our hearts. We pray that you will help us to see through the eyes of Christ, to see others with the same mercy that you see us. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us give of our gifts of money, time, and talents generously out of gratitude for God's abundant blessings in our lives. If you make, wish to make a contribution to the ministry of Oakland United Methodist Church, you can send your contribution to 200 North Main, Box 4, Oakland, Iowa, 515. Six, zero. O oh God, accept the gifts received here in this place of worship and those that will be received in the week ahead. Guide us in using them to serve our neighbors near and far so that, and so shine the light of your love in the midst of the darkness of our world. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen.
in the power of the Holy Spirit, we now go forth into the world to fulfill our calling to live as the people of God, the body of Christ. Go into this week blessed and refreshed by the grace and mercy of God, the healing love of Jesus Christ, and the sure and certain presence of the Holy Spirit. Go into the world with confidence to serve God and your neighbor in all you do and say, Amen. And our closing song is, O Church of God United, number 547 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Thank you.